What's going on YouTube? Jordan Dubois, owner of lightninglister.com. Today we're going to talk about investing in residential real estate, specifically rentals that are like six months to a year long leases that we provide for tenants and we hold on to them 10, 20 years or whatever. Okay. We're also going to talk about it in cash. We're buying in cash. We're not going to invest uh, by obtaining a mortgage and then putting only 20% down because most people say, Oh, I've got a hundred grand. I can buy two properties that are 200 grand each, but 20% down and then have some money left over. No, we're not going to play with that in this video. This video, we're going to assume that you diligently saved for 10 years and you've got money to buy a property. It may not be the cost of this property, but this is just an example. So you can calculate return on investment and find rental properties for your budget. Okay. If you haven't already watched my video, it's going to be linked right up here. It's about how investing can really harm you. It's funny. I think, you know, check it out because investing is extremely risky. It's gambling and you can lose all your money and more. All right. So to calculate the return on investment, the way I do it, I have a program run all the stuff that I wrote in Python. I learned Python. Okay. Don't be lazy. Learn programming. It'll make your life way better. I'll link the book to the, the description to the book that I read in order to use Python this in this way. It's called automate the boring stuff with Python. All right. But today we're going to go through what the program does. We need four figures to calculate return on investment to compare the properties. Like I like to the asking price of the property, which is what we're going to assume we're getting the property for. I mean, we can negotiate, possibly get it lower, but whatever. That's what they post it for. Boom. Let's say we can get it. There's no multiple offers or none of that asking price of the property. We need the rent amount in the area, the stats and figures for the property. So the monthly burden of the property, and then the last, we need the vacancy rates and we're going to calculate our return on investment using this kind of situation, setting up what's called a Monte Carlo simulation. Okay. So all of these facts can be found on sites like redfin.com, Zillow, all of that stuff. MLS, if you're a real estate agent or if you have a real estate agent. We get the asking price, all the facts, HOA, property tax, maintenance and home ins owners insurance. These are all known facts. These things can go up and down though. So you want to under, you want to look a, a couple years back, determine a variance, a variable rate and kind of, uh, assume a price that is appropriate for that based on the variance. And you can make projections based on that variance. The maintenance is just going to be 1% of this super guess right here. Okay. This, it could be way more than that, way less. I mean, if you need to put more paint or carpet or they blow half your house up, you're going to be paying a lot more than that. This is just a starting point guess. And it, we don't really know how good it is until the real world works things out and you have the property in your hands and you're, you're either saying, okay, this is good or bad. So the best thing that I can think of is to 1% of the asking price per month saving it up. If nothing goes wrong, if you're buying newer properties, then nothing might go wrong. And then the homeowners insurance is going to take care of the maintenance of the lawn and the front and all that stuff. Most likely. All right. So we've got our monthly burden, our asking price area rents. So you look up all the properties that are very comparable in that area to the property you want, and you determine the area rents. It's very important to gather, as many properties as you can that's that are comparable to it. So you have more data to create a better guess. Okay. We're using like inferential statistics, ugly cousin here, nothing formal. It's just trying to make the best guess, you know, better than just picking at random something. So in this case, we grabbed 12 rental properties that were very similar to this property that we're looking at and we bend them or put them in uh, quantile um, bins, which basically tell you what number of them are lower or higher than a certain price. So for asking for, if we're asking the question, how much rent can I get? Like what's the probability of rent that I I'm able to get X, Y, Z, all the different rents. So in this case, out of the 12 rental properties, three fell at or below 1260, six fell at or below 1500 and nine fell at or below 1675 in rent. So statistics and all that would call it percentiles. It's just 
at or below. So 25th percentile was 1260, 1500 was the 50th percentile, and 1675 was the 75th percentile. But the only thing I like to know is, okay, I like to use a 25th or in between 25th and 50th percentile. So the rents of 1260 and 1500. For this, I was very conservative and I set a very conservative bound and I used this number, 1260. So it's the probability of achieving a rent greater than or equal to the desired rent you want. So since I'm buying this cash, I don't have to meet some kind of monthly amount except this, 556. As long as it's higher than 556, I'm making positive cash flow, but until something goes awry and breaks in the maintenance or something like that. So, I mean, but 1260 is definitely a good buffer. So we choose 1260. You could easily calculate the probability of uh, rent at or above 1500. It's just how many are at or above 1500? Three properties, three properties, that's six. That would be 50% chance. I'm more comfortable with the 75% chance of 1260, okay? Based on the available data. Again, these are all guesses, but it's based on available data. Now, the vacancy rates, the way I like to think of it, it's generally the number of properties vacant over the number of properties that have been listed in that area uh, at some specific time. But that only gives you a probability of renting per month. Like if there's four properties available or four properties, yeah, available and vacant out of 10 in a, at a certain month, that means that you have a 40% chance of renting your property at that month. So, or in a month. Uh, so I don't really like to think of it that way. I like to buy, bound it, put bounds on the amount of properties. So if we had 20 properties that were rented, I look back a year and I determine, okay, out of all those 20 properties, let's align them from smallest to highest, from lowest to highest, the value of the amount of time, amount of days they sat vacant. And we'll align them just like this. And then we will determine uh, 25th percentile, 50th and 75th percentile and so on to make a bound. So out of the 20 properties, 15 sat on the market 60 days or less. So I am very conservative in all the stuff that I do when I invest. So 60 days is going to be my vacancy rate because that is the 75th percent 75th percentile mark and I am more comfortable if you went with like 15 or 10 days or properties like five out of the 20 sat on the market those days uh, you're going to get something that is not conservative you're going to be more risky okay so I want to do the 75th percentile on vacancy rates and it was 60 days on the market so that means I can expect two months out of the year that I will have nothing coming in and I will be paying this monthly cost, okay? So when I run the ROI, that's the final step to compute, then to uh, compare it to all the other properties that I'm looking at. And then if it doesn't even meet basic ROI requirements that I set up in the program, then it doesn't even show me this property in the list of, of, uh, of properties that I, are, uh, I will buy, okay? Blah, blah. Okay, anyways, so the ROI we compute it is very simple. You take the monthly amount that you owe, you subtract it from the rent you're going to make. I use the 25th percentile, conservative, and then you multiply it by the amount of months you're expecting to make rent. I did one month vacancy, two month vacancies, and then no month just for uh, example. Uh, just for an example, okay? So with one month of vacancy, you have 1260 minus 556 times 11, but then for that 12th month, you're gonna pay that 556, so you subtract that. You divide it all by the amount of money you put into the property, assuming no closing costs or none of that. I'm a real estate agent, I negotiate the closing costs away, or I use my buyer's commission, buyer's agent commission, to pay for anything that I need to pay for on that. So that's why this is the figure that I put in here, okay? And I try to negotiate it lower, so this is a, a more conservative figure as well. This comes out to be 2.96% for this property. All right, that's a lower bound. That's like being very conservative. With two months vacancy rent though, right here from uh, what our 75th percentile showed according to the data I found, we're, we're at a 2.44% ROI. That's still not bad. 
you're you're making about five hundred dollars a month a, a little short of five hundred dollars a month with that with this property that's cash flow that's not equity building up in the property that you have to wait years and years and years and years to accumulate you know i mean you you accumulate equity right away but after one year you're making three four thousand when you but we'll go over that in the um, getting out a mortgage and financing option to buy this. But that is it for this video. Again, as I said, this is all set up and run over and over all the scenarios of rent. I use the percentiles, but it, my program takes all the percentiles, all of the scenarios that can happen. That's what a Monte Carlo does, a Monte Carlo simulation. It takes all of this stuff, runs all the possible scenarios, and then gives you a probability of achieving some scenario that you've identified out of all the scenarios, some scenario or better. Okay. Cause we want some at or better than what we're thinking. We don't want worse, you know? So in summary, you want to have the money to invest in this scenario. In this case that I really, uh, I really believe that you should have all the money. If you're going to invest it, not borrow it. If you borrow it, you need to have the money to cover the loan in case something goes awry or you can't sell the property, market drops, whatever, okay? Obtain rental facts for the area of interest. Boom, all of these, this rental, that's vacancy rates, those are all rental facts, okay? Then we set up reasonable criteria based on these probabilities and facts, reasonable meaning uh, conservative in this case. We run the Monte Carlo simulation and that is done in, uh, as I said, Python, but if I have a high enough demand for this, this service, if you want me to make it an application, I can convert it into a Google app script. It can run all on Google sheets. You would have to just put in a couple different things to get all the APIs linked up. And I would make a video on it for people who don't know how to code. I will put this up on lightninglister.com. If you have any questions or if you want, leave a comment below, let me know and let me know what you think about this, and we will go from there. But yeah, this is it. This all runs in the background. I wake up in the morning, my Windows task scheduler runs my Python program, uses all the APIs, grabs all the data, and then I get a nice little visual printout of which properties are good candidate properties. I use this for my clients, myself, my family, everyone that is close to me that invests, or is just looking for a property that they could rent out if they move and it's not their main residence. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.